Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship at Windsor United Church on this fourth Sunday of Easter. I hope this day finds you well and continuing to cope with this time of isolation. And I certainly hope that soon we will be back here in this sanctuary worshiping together as the family that we know so lovingly as Windsor United Church. This morning, on behalf of the community of faith, we welcome all who are worshiping with us. Also on behalf of the community of faith this morning, I want to extend words of sympathy to Barry and Joan Blank. This week, Barry's uncle, Jeremy Jackson, passed away. Even though we are not gathered in this space, we want to assure Barry and Joan of our continued prayers uh, during this time of uh, their sadness and bereavement. God be with you all. Let us now take some time away from life, whether it's busy or whether it's been quiet this week for you. Let us take some time to gather for worship. I invite Rhonda to come forward and share in the lighting of the Christ candle. This morning, we begin our time together by lighting the Christ candle. May its light embrace all who are lonely, comfort all who are grieving, reassure all who are searching, and bless all whose lives are an offering of gratitude. In the darkest valley or on the highest mountain, in the hard work of life or in moments of ease, in our day-to-day -day reality or at times set aside like this time now, with every step we take, may we find time to give thanks to God. May our gathering for worship today be such a moment in time. My friends, let us gather for worship as we sing our opening hymn, Come, Thou Fount of Every Blessing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me 
in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, I pray that we might hear the whisper of your voice in the calming of our minds and the longing of our hearts by the words of my mouth and by the meditations of all of our hearts. Amen. It will probably come as no surprise to many of you who know me really well that over the past six weeks or so, as a part of my daily spiritual walk with God, I have immersed myself in the Psalms. Early on in this time of isolation, as I found myself creating a new normal for my life, I received a phone call from a very good friend who asked me how I was doing and what I was doing to cope with this new reality that we were all now living. I was thankful for that call, and in particular, the question about how I was coping, for it inspired me to revisit the Psalms, a place of retreat where I have often wrestled with life's big questions, and where I have found renewal, as in the words of the hymn writer, the storms of life have rocked my boat. You see, for some time now, I have embraced the Psalms as honest, candid poems 
that tell the story of the human cry that longs to know and be known by God. A cry that often calls out to the universe with those questions that have preoccupied and haunted humanity since the beginning of time. Why God? Or where are you God in, in all of this? Many years ago, during a Bible study, a very wise participant called the Psalms an anatomy of the soul, because she said there's not an, an emotion in the entire human experience that cannot be found there. I agree with her. In fact, I want you to think of it like this. People look into mirrors to see how they're doing on the outside. One can look into the Psalms to look to see how we are doing on the inside. A mirror is an excellent way to learn about our appearance. The Psalms are a biblical way to discover something about ourselves. A mirror shows us the shape of our nose and the curve of our chin, things we otherwise know only through the reports of others. The Psalms show us the shape of our souls the curve of our brokenness, those realities that are deep within us, hidden and sometimes even obscured, for which we need to name and to focus. And so the Psalms help us to align our thoughts to the context of God's story, and so to align our story to the desires of God's heart. Of course, as many of you already know, some of the Psalms encourage a devotion that express a profound sense of gratitude to God. How many mornings at the beginning of worship might I begin with these words, make a joyful noise to the Lord all the lands, come into God's presence with singing. Or with all my heart, I will thank you, O God. There are other psalms that portray those moments in our lives when we have experienced a gnawing sense of God's distance, God's absence, or perhaps even God's silence. Why, O oh Lord, do you stand aloof? Or God, why have you forsaken me? Awake, why are you asleep, O oh Lord? These psalms represent the very human, raw moments of pain and anguish. And then there are the other psalms that inspire God's nearness and God's intimacy with creation. You have looked deep within my heart and know me, or you know every hair on my head. Although I must admit, uh, that psalm I don't believe is to God for God's intimacy with my life. Walter Brueggemann, in his book, The Message of the Psalms, takes all 150 of them and puts them into three movements, three categories, which he names as orientation, disorientation, and new orientation. Each of these movements exemplify a fragment of the human experience, like the Psalms of Orientation. When, when everything in life feels right and content in our lives, these are the psalms we are perhaps most comfortable with. They express gratitude for God's ordering of life, a life that is filled with many blessings. And then there are those psalms of disorientation. I think the word probably says it all. These psalms are a reaction to God when the world we know is broken. These are psalms of lament that can move and deepen our faith. The words of these psalms reflect the pain of people engaging with God in world-shattering circumstances. And then finally, there's new orientation. When we are pulled up out of life's brokenness, out of life's circumstances, and we are brought to a deeper sense of awareness and gratitude. Now, Brueggemann argues that we go through the rhythms of orientation to disorientation to new orientation as a part of the natural human experience. And I tend to agree with him. In fact, I believe the beauty of the psalm that we have before us this morning, Psalm 23, 
And perhaps the reason why it has become one of the most famous passages in human history is that in this one single song, all three movements exist. We could say that Psalm 23 is a compilation of the entire rhythm of the human experience. We begin with that phrase of safety and well-being. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Everything seems to be good, well aligned with, with God, our Creator. We are then invited to green pastures of growing places and of still waters that comfort and sustain places of rest and renewal. Here, life is good. Life is blessed. And of course, as much as we would like to stay there, life happens. And then we find ourselves walking through the dark valley, crying out to God, where are you? Why is this happening to me? what Brueggemann would call disorientation. And it is here in that dark valley where the weight of the world threatens to seize our joy, grip our heart with fear and sadness. And so as we immerse ourselves in the psalm, we then hear the promise of a new day from the shepherd whose rod and staff comforts us and who prepares a table before us as a sign of, of shelter, of hospitality, and welcome. And it is here that we are brought to a deeper sense of awareness and gratitude for life and for God's presence through it all. And in that moment, our cup overflows. As we come to the end of the psalm, we, we find ourselves looking back over life. And we see how through the seasons of life, goodness and mercy and grace follow us wherever we go. Psalm 23. And for generations, this psalm has brought comfort to people through all the circumstances in life. Do you know, I have discovered that when all other words have failed, the shepherd song has been close to the lips and hearts of so many who find deep peace, whether it has been spoken, whether it has been sung, or whether it has been whispered in prayer. I'm thankful for that phone call that my friend made many weeks ago, inviting me to consider how I had been coping with this time of isolation. Thank you for these beautiful songs that are a reflection of my own journey through life. And especially this 23rd Psalm that has always been near and dear to my heart. And so this week I invite you to carry this Psalm 23 with you. When you are feeling tired or worn or filled with fear, listen to the invitation of the shepherd who welcomes you to those green pastures and still waters where you will find refreshment and renewal. And if you're sitting at the table feeling blessed and thankful, then listen to the shepherd who says to you, remember. Remember that in these difficult and uncertain times when many people so desperately need hope, when your cup runneth over, fill someone else's. Let us pray. God of the journey, we thank you for abiding with us throughout our life's pilgrimage. As we seek to know and love you more deeply, embrace us in our times of silence, walk with us in the dry deserts of our yearning for wholeness and peace, and lead us to those green pastures and still waters where we will find rest for our weary bodies. Enable us to be soul friends to each other and to be constant and courageous seekers after you. As Christ shared his life with others, he always spent time with you. May we grow to resemble him, our beloved friend, 
Redeemer, and Guide. Good Shepherd, within your embrace, we know the power of your love to transform and to heal. Within the circle of your love, we have been blessed by the warmth of family and friends. It is here that we know that we belong. May we grow and be nurtured as one family. Good Shepherd, within your embrace, we find comfort and healing. We bring to you those who are weak or struggling with physical, mental, or spiritual health. We remember this morning the people of Fort Mac, whose lives have been displaced because of flooding. May they find safety, may they find home. We continue to pray for the loved ones of those whose lives have been changed forever because of the tragic deaths two weekends ago. May the outpouring of love from family, friends, and strangers be a source of inspiration and hope for all. We pray too for those who continue to be affected by the coronavirus. May strength of spirit and hope fill them as it fills us. Good Shepherd, within your embrace, we know your abiding presence, and so we give thanks that you are never that you never let us go. As a shepherd, you guide us, care for us, and come searching us out when we are lost. Truly, our cup overflows. Hear these our spoken and unspoken prayers, and together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. for this morning, I want to respond to a question that many of you have been asking. For those who want to be able to support the ongoing ministry of Windsor United Church, there is a description below with a link to Canada Helps. By using this link in Canada Helps, 
you will be able to support the ministry here at Windsor United Church. Again, thank you for your ongoing support. And now, my friends, as we leave this time of worship, let us go blessed by the light of Christ that dwells within us. Take with you always the gift of God's compassion so that you might share that love and care with others. In the days ahead, may your eyes reflect the light of God, and may your hands be open to share and to receive it. Grace and peace be yours always. Amen.